Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. This is a quote by Seneca. And what he is saying here is that we're all aware that labor builds us as stronger, stronger people. If we go to the gym and through progressive overload, we develop strength. We know this. Through running, we get fitter and fitter. This is obvious to us. But he says that difficulties, troubling situations, hard situations, obstacles, build us as a character. It builds our strength of character. And you'll see this with people that have been through hard times in life. When they're faced with another difficult situation, they seem to be unshakable because they've developed that mental resilience. If you want to build strength of body, you put your body through stress, through difficulties, lifting weights, and over time you build up and up. And the same is with the mind. If you go through out your comfort zone every day, you keep going outside of your comfort zone, eventually your comfort zone grows and grows and grows and you become a more confident person. You become more assertive and more, even more peaceful when you realize that all these externals that used to bother you, used to have some hold of you, they no longer bother you, you become peaceful. It's like memento mori, when you lose that fear of death, it no longer hangs over you. You develop peace of mind because death no longer hangs over you. I felt the same way. Death used to hang over me and it used to be something that feared me. It used to keep me up at night. I was thinking about what happens when you die. But then I thought, what does happen when I die? I would never know. It's like the story of Diogenes where he's talking about death and his followers said, we'll give you a nice burial. And he said, no, throw me over the walls. And his followers said, but the animals, they'll feast on your remains. He said, well, give me my staff so I can fight them off. But yet yeah, the day I realized that I wouldn't know if I was dead, that, that peace of mind came. I no longer had death hanging over me. And this is the same in life. You keep going through these difficult situations, thinking about these complex subjects, these difficult subjects, going through trials and error, going through outside your comfort zone. And eventually you start to develop the strength of character. If you stay within what's comfortable, you'll remain comfortable for a while until your comfort zone shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and you start to feel trapped within this bubble, this cage that you've built around yourself. So you have to push it out. You have to set yourself free from the constraints that you've built upon yourself. There's a caveat to this. Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Well, not all the time. Labor does not always strengthen the body if you do not do it correctly, if you do not recover correctly, if you do not eat correctly. If you do not do the right things after this labor, then actually labor damages the body. If you go to the gym, you work out, but you don't recover, you don't eat properly, and you destroy your muscles, actually you become fatigued, you become weak. This is the same as in the mind. If you go through difficulty, but you do not take on that difficulty correctly, you do not recover from it, you do not allow yourself to recover from it, maybe you mask it all with addiction or, um, distraction, you do this, actually difficulties can weaken you. So you go through difficult situations, talk to people, get help, do the right steps afterwards so that you can build on your character. Reflect on the situation you went through. If you do something outside your comfort zone, afterwards think about it. How did that make you feel? Maybe it made you feel good. Journal it down. Make notes of your thoughts and your emotions after the fact and you can grow from the difficult situation. Welcome back to the Everyday Stoic. I'm William Mulligan, and today I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite Stoic teachings and principles that can help you be a stronger character. Um, principles that I've used in my life that have helped me go from being an anxious, fearful, nervous person to a confident, peaceful, calm, non-fearing person. Today's video is sponsored by the Memento Mori Life Calendar. I personally use it to help remind me that my time is finite and that I must live in the present moment and not waste a single moment. You have power over your own mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This is a quote from the meditations of Marcus Aurelius. So at first, it might sound counterintuitive to understand how little control you have over the external world. Understanding that you do not control these forces, like people's ideas of you, how people react, how the weather is, how situations and circumstances evolve and develop. You don't have power over this thing. The only thing you have power over is how you react to these things. 
And yes, it sounds like you don't have much power at all. But when you realize this, as Marcus Aurelius says, you will find strength because you see that these things are impossible to control. It's like fighting the waves. You cannot control the waves. No matter how much they crash over you, you do not control them. But you control how you react to the world. You control your opinion and your thoughts on these situations and events. So you're stuck in traffic on your way to work. You could never have controlled this traffic. And no matter how much you sit in traffic, complaining and moaning, getting frustrated that you're stuck there and you'll be late to work, you can't change this. So you're stuck there for an hour getting angry and getting agitated. You can never change this. But what you can change is your thoughts and opinion on this. You can control your inner peace. You can sit there and be peaceful and think through your thoughts, think through your problems, get some answers, be productive with your time. You can see this time stuck in traffic as a gift, but it's all in your perception. So Marcus Aurelius is saying you don't have control over the external world, you have control over your internal. And when you understand this, you'll find strength. You'll stop fighting the external. You'll stop fighting the uncontrollable because it's pointless. It's like fighting the waves, expecting them to be still. Another person cannot hurt you without your cooperation. You are hurt the moment you believe yourself to be. This is another quote by Marcus Aurelius. And what he's saying here is that we add weight, we add gravity, we add meaning to the words of other people. We decide that these words hurt us. And we do this with situations because we interpret them as a hurtful situation. But what if you decided to interpret these situations that are difficult, that cause pain, you interpret them as life giving you a blessing, saying, you asked for strength. I will give you a challenge that will build your strength like no other. Someone says something to you, they say an off comment, and they could have meant no harm by what they said. They could have tried to help you, they could have just been trying to be funny, or maybe they were trying to be rude, we're not quite sure, but they've said these words, and because you don't like this person, because you see this person as a rude, ignorant individual, you decide that the words they have said are hurtful, and now you carry this hurt with you, and you're hurt, because you are cooperating with this person. And the thing is, it's like the quote that says, he who angers you controls you. Someone says something hurtful to you, you can choose to leave it there and let go. Because the moment you decide that you'll carry this, these words, you'll carry this hurt, you've given them power. You've allowed a 10 second soundbite of what they said to remain in you for a week, a month, a year, and it weighs down on you and bears a great burden on you. Or you can just let it go decide that you won't let the words of other people to hold you back. So if you decide that the opinions of these people don't really matter, then the words that they say don't really matter. And if you just see that they're an individual that's maybe hurt or trying to be funny or trying to be rude or just trying to get some attention and they're saying these rude things just to get some attention, then you can feel, feel almost sorry for them or find it humorous, the words that they're saying and you're no longer hurt by these words. They say something offensive to you and you just think, oh, wow, I kind of feel sorry for them, that this is how they resort to making friends. This is how they resort to social interactions. It's not gonna take them very far. And Mox Aurelius even says, if you see this, then maybe teach them the better ways. Or if you can't, don't even do that. Events happen as they do. People behave as they are. Embrace what you actually get. This is a quote by Epictetus, and it's one of my favorite quotes because what Epictetus is saying is that people can be unpredictable, so people behave as they are. Events happen as they do, but your interpretation might become a different story, a different narrative. You add a different feeling to the event, but the event happens as it does. If you was to view it from an unbiased point of view, almost a spectator, and there was hundreds of spectators with no bias, no emotion in the event, they would all see the event as the same thing. But when you're in this situation and you've added weight, you've added emotion, it becomes your own interpretation of the event. 
So embrace what you actually get. Epictetus says this because if you try to look at an event without bias, then embrace what you actually get. As the Stoics say in Morfate, love your fate. When something comes your way, you embrace it because that is what life has given you. You can't change this and you can't stop this. You have been given this thing and you must embrace it, as Epictetus says. And embrace people as they are. You can't change people. You can try to teach them, you can try to help them. But at the end of the day, there's billions of people and you can't change all of them. So just embrace people. It will help you relax a lot more when you realize that these things are outside of your control. So embrace them and focus on your inner character, the things that you do actually control. If you are ruled by mind, you are a king. If by body, a slave. This quote reminds me of Socrates and the way he taught about a diet that we must not live to eat, but eat to live. Um, it's about that control, that self-discipline. Yeah. So you, your body gets these cravings, you, you want that hit of dopamine, you want to scroll Instagram and get that nice feeling, you want to go on TikTok, you desire all these things, but that's you being a slave to your body. That's you being a slave to dopamine and these impulses that your body has. And most of the time, these impulses can be bad. So if you are ruled by your mind, your ruling faculty is your mind, your wisdom and your internal being is the thing that controls how you behave, helps you keep true to your character and live a life of virtue. This is how you become, as Cato the Elder says, a king because everyone else becomes a slave to their feelings, their impulses, and it drags them this way, um, drags them that way. They do things that they probably shouldn't do or don't want to do, that a ruling mind doesn't want them to do, but they have lost control to these impulses. Socrates recommends that we eat a bland diet, um, and we eat this diet such as oats. He uh, recommended a vegetarian diet that we don't just eat all these fancy foods, fill ourselves with all these nice foods because then we desire more foods like this and we want more and more. And it becomes rather that we're eating from impulse and desire rather than a survival. And this is an easy thing to do. It just takes time and many small steps. So you pull out your phone and you go on Instagram and you start scrolling just rubbish. Right there in that decision, you have to go, right, cut it out. I'm, I'm taking control of this. I'm being the king. I'm taking control of my impulses. I'm not going down this path. And you keep doing this. And instead of going down a path of impulses, you start to go down that path more to your ruling faculty and you start controlling the direction you go. And over time, you develop this self-discipline and this control. They who fear suffering are already suffering from what they fear. Montaigne said this. And the idea is that when there is a situation coming up, of course it can be fearful. When you get there, if you're scared of the dentist, then the day you get there, maybe it's scary, maybe it's fearful, maybe there is a little bit of pain, discomfort. If you spend the month running up to that event in fear, then every single day for hours of a day, so for 30 hours or more, 30 days, you are in this state of fear for this thing that only happens once. This event will only happen once. And yes, it may be uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes events are uncomfortable, but you don't need to be uncomfortable for the months leading up to it. You can just be uncomfortable on the day. So when you have these feelings, I used to have them when events coming up, I'll overthink, I'll think, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? But these aren't productive thoughts. None of these thoughts are productive because you can't change the event when it happens. The only thing you can do if there's an event coming up is prepare study, make notes, prepare yourself for it. But beyond that, nothing else is helpful. So if you're having these unproductive thoughts, just forget them. Know that the best thing you can do is actually be relaxed leading up to that event. So you fear the suffering and oftentimes the event doesn't actually happen. It's very common to be fearing something and then it happens and you're like, oh, wasn't so bad. What was the need for fear? No man is good by chance. Virtue is something that must be learned. The ultimate goal is eudaimonia, which is human flourishing. This is achieved by living in accordance with nature, living a life of virtue. Of course, being good and following virtue is oftentimes the more difficult situation. Life often rewards us for being bad and following vice, 
oftentimes doing the thing we know that is wrong rewards us instantly. Stealing, we get that gratification straight away. We get the thing that we desired instantly. But it's not the right thing to do. It's not right for society and it's not right for our own, our own character because we become a person that when we want something, instead of working for it, instead of building our character up for it, we decide to try to steal it. We take it from someone and this damages our character. We become more greedy and impulsive. So, virtue is something that we must learn. It's something we do every day. It's like the crossroad, the choice of Hercules, where he was given a crossroad and he could either follow the path of virtue or the path of vice. And the path of vice, he was promised by Kakia, the goddess of vice. He was promised, um, if you go down this path, you'll have everything you want. You will never have to work a day in your life. You won't have to sweat. You won't have to bleed. There'll be no stress. It'll be easy. You'll get everything you want. And then, Arate, the goddess of virtue, she said, go down this path, uh, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard, there's going to be sadness and pain, but like, I swear, this, this will build you, this will make you into Hercules, the great Hercules that you can be. I can see this in you. And I can see that in everyone. If everyone follows the path that Hercules took, the path of Arate, everyone can be such a good person, everyone has that potential in them. We're all born with this capacity for eudaimonia, which is the ultimate goal of Stoicism. It's the same goal that Emperor Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, Musonius Rufus, all these great people, it's the same goal that they were trying to achieve. This same goal that arguably one of history's greatest men, Marcus Aurelius, was trying to achieve. You can achieve that. And you're all on, everyone's on a level playing field. So you can achieve this thing if you follow a life of virtue and live in accordance with nature. I hope today's video helped you. Leave a comment below what topics you want to see me talk about. And I'm always looking for feedback. I want these videos to be delivered in the best possible way for you to learn and enjoy. So I do take feedback. So if you want to support what I'm doing, please consider becoming a YouTube member. It comes with uh, a video on a certain topic where I deep dive into a certain topic and talk about it. It's much longer form and maybe not as enjoyable to the general public, but I'm sure for the people that want to learn the specifics of stoicism and certain topics like strength of character or regret or loneliness, then I deep dive into these topics and share it with members. So that, that's to enjoy and consider getting the Memento Mori Life Calendar. It supports what I'm doing and I know it will help you if you use it. I use it every week, I fill in one of those boxes and every single week I use it, um, I just go, wow, another week passed. What, what kind of went wrong that week? Where, where did I waste my time? What did I, what did I do wrong as a person? And then I reevaluate, reassess. I go, this week I won't do those things and I improve. But I also look at it as I'm walking by, I see it and go, I can't waste time or this little thing that's annoying me right now, that's, that's, that box is going to be ticked off that I spent worrying about this thing. So it helps me a lot and I know it's helped other people. So hopefully it helps you. And head over to my Instagram at The Everyday Stoic where I share stoic memes, stoic Q&As, stoic quotes, stoic teachings, just everything to do with stoicism. And I try to join in the community as much as possible. There's 420,000 like-minded stoics, I believe, which is just crazy. I get so many nice comments and messages and I learn so much from you all. Follow me on Instagram, at William Mullingbrother, where I just share a bit more personal stuff. Still stoic, mainly themed, because that's what I do most of my time. Um, and have a great day. I would say um, I'm trying to put more energy into these videos. So if you made it this far, um, just comment Memento Mori. It means remember death or remember your mortal. Uh, the comments just help boost the YouTube video, helps more people see it. Uh, I just want more people to see these videos so that it gives me the avenue to go down to produce more of these videos, so that I can keep producing these videos and maybe get guests involved. So if you know any guests that want to talk to me about stoicism topics, please let me know. And um, yeah, have a great day.